Hello everyone, I'm Raymond and I'm the minister here at St John's Church in Lurgan. You're so, so welcome, whether you're a regular or a newcomer or even a visitor among us this morning. You're so, so welcome. We're glad to have you. I just want to open up with some verses from Ezekiel chapter 36, which says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. These are some verses that have really been on my mind for the past while because there's a lot of church or there's a lot of talk about getting churches reopened and ready to be reopened. And yet, a bit of me is wondering, all the talk is about the state of the building. And yet, what about the state of our hearts? Are we ready to come back to worship? Because these verses from Ezekiel show that there's actually a far more important question. Because the question is not what state is the church building in, but what state is your heart in? That's the thing that God is ultimately concerned with. And that's the question that's really been bugging me for some time. Because what's the point in reopening our buildings? We're in a mad rush to meet back together if our hearts are not right. What's the point in focusing on cleaning our buildings if our hearts are full of anxiety and bitterness and weariness and resentment? I wonder today how healthy our hearts are at this time before God. Because while like lockdown has brought many good things in our community, the fact it has brought many of us closer together than perhaps we were before, I wonder for how many of us as individuals, other sins have perhaps begun to creep in. Because what Ezekiel is saying here is that sin is a bit like a spiritual cholesterol. It hardens the heart. It makes us cold to others and to their needs. Which is why what God promises to do is not just commit to our lives and make us just a little bit better, but to give us completely new hearts. God is saying that in order to live for him, he needs to give us a deep heart surgery. Where we have these new hearts of flesh. A heart that is soft and beats in sync with the heart of God. Because it's a heart that loves God and loves the things and the ways and the decrees of God. So how is your heart today? How is your relationship with God today? How is your love and your passion for God today? Because I think we could all recognise that we could all use more of God's Spirit in our lives to keep our hearts soft. Because the Spirit of God writes the law on our minds and our hearts. Meaning that we'd not only know how to live for God, but we'd actually have a desire to live that way because it's just the best way to live. And so as we come to worship now, let's use this as an opportunity right at the beginning of our worship to have a heart examination before the Lord. At the time to clear away the things that are damaging, that are unhelpful, that are sinful, that are hardening our hearts, both to God and also to others. And instead receive more of God's Holy Spirit to give us a heart of flesh that lives for him. And so let's do that together in prayer now. Lord God, you search and know our hearts. We can hide nothing from you. Our guilt our shame, our secret sins that no one else knows about. You know it all, and yet you still call us into relationship with you. And as we come to you today, we come with hardened hearts, hearts that may have been scarred and calloused by past hurts, hearts that may have been hardened by a pride that never listens to anyone, because we always have to be right, or in control. Hearts that have become cold to the needs of others around us. 
either because of burnout or tiredness or even selfishness. Hearts that have been hardened to your ways. And so we pray for a fresh outpouring of your spirit in our lives. Lord God, would you soften our hearts, renew our hearts from the damage and decay of sin and give us a fresh hunger, desire and passion for you. Lord God, in those places across the world where the coronavirus is spiking and bringing new cases, we pray for leaders who are having to weigh up entering lockdown a second time and the reality of the economic cost of doing so. Give them the wisdom and clarity of vision that they need to navigate this uncertainty. But Lord God, we also want to bring before you those who are unwell, either in hospital or at home. Those who are still having to isolate. Those who are struggling with their mental health. And those who are mourning. And Lord God, we ask that healing would be released upon all who need that touch in their lives today. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. And so as Christ our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
And now Ronnie is going to bring to us our Bible reading from Galatians chapter 5. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbour as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. So I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you do not do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. Some of the restrictions around COVID-19, which meant that I haven't been able to get home to Calvin to visit family and friends, uh, have been uh, removed um, at the end of June, which is, which is good news, which means I can now travel home to see them. And one of the people that I'm actually really looking forward to meet the most is my niece, who is nine months old. Because when I seen her uh, a couple of, of weeks ago um, on a video, I, 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 I just thought, you know, wow, she's getting big. She's really beginning to grow. And perhaps all of us can, can uh, recognise something of the fact of when we've met someone who we haven't seen for a while and we just kind of thought, oh, what's happened to you? You seem to have really changed, you've really grown. Because it kind of struck me, you know, that I shouldn't be surprised that my niece has grown because that's what babies do. It's natural for babies to grow. And I say that because growth in the Christian life is something that should be natural as well. You know, Christianity is not just about the forgiveness of sins and being made right with God. Which, which, don't get me wrong, that's great. If that's all that God did, it, it, it would in fact be wonderful. But that's not all that God is interested in for our lives. Because coming into this love relationship with God is in fact just the beginning. Because God wants to change you, to grow you, to transform you in ways that you never thought possible. And so as we continue our series, looking at the Holy Spirit, I want to talk about today about how the Spirit helps us to grow. And the passage that Ronnie has read from Galatians chapter 5 is in fact a great passage on Christian growth. Because the first thing that we see in this passage is that growth involves 
fruit of the Spirit. It says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. But you see where it says the word fruit, it's singular. And then it goes on to give a list. What it's saying is that all these things are one. You can't separate them out. All these things together are fruit. They're not fruits, it is fruit. So let me just give some examples. Some of you might be very kind and loving people. You help and you support your family and your friends. But you might not be good. Now you might ask, what do I mean that you're not good? Well, I mean that, that the word for goodness also means sincerity or integrity. That means that for some of us, that we only act uh, the same way in every situation um, uh, to all people because we are loving them, but it's not sincere in the fact that we pick or choose. You know, we, we, we're, we're kind and we're loving to some people, but we're not kind and loving to other people. It's talking about how often that we love. In other words, our love and our kindness without goodness and sincerity is in fact only self-serving. You know, we only love people for reward or what we think we can get. And therefore it's not real love or real kindness. Or let, or let me give another example. Some people might seem unflappable, like they've got real peace. But they're not gentle and they're not kind. So you might ask us, so where then do they get their peace from? And they get their peace because they don't really care. And the point is that you either have all these things in your life or you don't have the Spirit. Or you aren't allowing the Spirit to fully work in you. See, all the fruit are connected to have the Spirit working in our lives. And so first is the fruit of the Spirit. It's all, it's all interconnected. But second is the power of the Spirit. Because if you have the Spirit of God in you, there will in fact be growth. You will become more patient. You will become a more loving person. You will be able to face your troubles. G. Uh, Morgan Campbell gives perhaps the best illustration on growth that I've come across where he gives, where he talks about the story where he was in Italy and he was around seeing the site and he came to this particular graveyard. And he saw there what was a huge marble slab over this particular person's grave. But about 600 years ago, there was an acorn that had somehow gotten into that grave. And so out of that acorn came a shoot. And out of that shoot came a tree. And that tree had grown up so big and so tall that it had actually split this big marble slab in half. Now common sense will tell you that, you know, here's an acorn, a very small seed. And you have this big, massive marble slab. You know, who wins? A thousand pounds is kind of pressing down on that acorn. And yet, the acorn wins every time. It's a no-brainer. And so, if botanical growth has that kind of power, what kind of power will the Spirit of God have in your life? Because this is not just fruit, it's fruit of the Spirit. And if the Spirit is in your life, if God is in your life, then there will be change. There has to be change. And so if you want to know if you're really growing, a kind of litmus test is to ask the people around you, because if you are in fact anyway abrasive or undiplomatic, we'll find that we won't have as many friends as we would like. Because there's a lack of love, there's a lack of joy, there's a lack of peace, there's a lack of patience, a lack of kindness, a lack of goodness, a lack of faithfulness, a lack of gentleness and a lack of self-control. Now I'm not saying at this point that you're not a Christian, but what I'm saying is, you, is that you cannot know if you are a Christian, if you are not changing. Because this is the Spirit of God. Now if the Spirit of God is there, there, there absolutely has to be definitely growth and change in our lives. So thirdly then, 
is the displaying of the Spirit. Because if we have the Spirit, again we're told that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. So if we are really filled with the Spirit, you know, here's the kind of things that should be just coming out of you. There should be love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. These are the kind of things that should be evident in our lives. And so if we say that we are followers of Jesus, that if we have the Holy Spirit of God living within us, is this in fact what other people see coming out of our lives? Because if you say you're, you're, that you're an apple tree, I should in fact see apples growing out of you. And so if we say that we are a Holy Spirit tree, there should be evidence and fruit of the Holy Spirit coming out of us in our lives. And so how many of us can really honestly look at this list and just say, you know, that totally describes me. You know, I'm completely loving and joyful and peaceful and patient and kind and good and faithful and gentle and self-controlled. Got, got, got down to a T. You know, but try and imagine yourself this way. I mean, just try to use your imagination. Try to picture yourself in every situation that you could possibly be in. Every situation that you're in, in your everyday life. And just imagine yourself being full of love in those situations. I mean, wouldn't that just be so great? Where your only response to people is just full of love. And filled with joy. You're just a joy-filled person. Picture yourself never getting stressed out. No matter how difficult the situation is. Because you're always loving, joyful and peaceful. And patient. Wouldn't you just love to be patient and more patient with people than perhaps you are right now? What about kindness? Always responding to people with kindness and with goodness and faithfulness just flowing out of us. Next is gentleness. Even when people uh, treat you harshly or say harsh words to you, you just continually respond to them with gentleness. And then self-control, which refers to those things in our lives which just wage war with our soul. Those things that we know in our lives that aren't good, but they just seem to have a power over us. Where we're, we are able to walk away from them and have self-control. Whether that's our anger or it's something else in our lives, just to be able to walk away from it. Just imagine yourself like that. I mean, aren't, isn't that the kind of person that we all want to be? I mean, isn't that why we repent? Why we were going uh, one direction, we were, we're heading one way in life and then we turn to Jesus because we've seen how beautiful he is and what he offers us. You see, I think most of us have a list of things that we think we need in our lives. They're probably the top of those right now is things like sanitizers and tissues and face masks and gloves. But here is another list that God says is actually even more important in our lives. And that is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Because when we repent, when we really come to Jesus and are filled with his spirit, the Bible tells us that these are the kind of things that will be just filling us and flowing out of us. This would be the fruit that is evident in our lives. But then lastly, is keeping in step with the Spirit. Verse 25 says, since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. It's saying that if we have the Spirit of God within us, then it should be our desire to keep in step with the Spirit. In fact, that phrase, to keep in step, means that each of our actions, each of our words, comes informed by God. Our everyday lives become one of daily asking, okay God, what do you want me to do right now? Not just during worship, not just during Sundays, but during the week, what do you want me to do? 
It's thinking about what God would want us to speak next. About what he would want us to do next. It's this uh, desire where every day, moment by moment, we want to act in the way that God would want us to. It's about desiring the things that God desires. And so I have to ask, is that what you want for your life? Do you really want to be led by the Spirit every step of your life? Meaning that just imagine if the Holy Spirit had control of your body right now. Where would he want you to go? What would he want you to say to the people who are around you? How would he want you to encourage the people who you live with? Or perhaps who you live beside? Do you really want to live this kind of life? Because I think that sometimes we can only want so much of God. Because we want to have this kind of balance in our lives where we want to eat healthy we want to have a good rest we want to have a family and perhaps a little religion which means you know we kind of sprinkle some of God in there as well and, it, and so it can be so easy to put a limit or to somehow put parameters on how much of God that we'll actually allow into our lives and so we'll, we'll, we'll come along to worship or, or we'll follow along in worship and we'll want enough of the Spirit in our lives to be right with God and get into heaven. But in terms of being led and doing whatever that God calls us to do, we're not so sure if we want that. You know, we're not so sure if we need to be that fanatical about God. And yet I don't find anywhere in the Bible where that kind of attitude is ever praised. Because the right attitude that the Bible talks about is hearing about Jesus and going, what? I will sell absolutely everything I have to have that treasure in my life. I will give everything to have that. The only people that I see in the Bible who, who argue for any kind of prudence or being moderate towards God is people like Judas. People who say things like, Mary, don't use all of that expensive perfume. That could be used for other things. Oh man, why did you waste it? Pouring it all out on the feet of Jesus. And in the Bible, I see this widow who gives two small copper coins, which is everything she has. And Jesus looks at her and he doesn't call her foolish. You see, with Jesus, it's all or nothing. And so, is this the kind of life that you want? Because this is the kind of thing, the kind of people that the Spirit of God changes us into. And so you see, to keep in step with the Spirit means that we yearn after what the Spirit yearns after. But verse 17 warns us that the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit. And so the Spirit is yearning, but we see here that the flesh is yearning too. But it yearns to what is contrary to the Spirit. So what the flesh and the Spirit yearn, and we're told in verses 19 through 21, what uh, a small list of the kind of things the flesh yearns for. But what does the Spirit yearn after? It's Jesus. You know, it's a bit like how when we were younger, perhaps some of us stuck up posters of our favourite musicians or our favourite bands or our favourite sports teams all over our rooms because essentially the spirit has Jesus pinned all over his room because you see we as the church as followers and disciples of Jesus Christ we are his bride and Jesus is the groom and the spirit if you like is both the best man and he's the maid of honour because the spirit is the one who brings us together. The Spirit is the one who is constantly whispering into our ears, look how beautiful Jesus is. The Spirit is the one who is always looking at Jesus and saying, you know, the whole reason that you don't have self-control, the whole reason you don't have love, the whole reason you don't have peace, is because you don't see how beautiful that this Jesus is. Because we can't just make ourselves more loving, more joyful, more peaceful and so on which is why it's called fruit and not called work because it's just as a gardener doesn't make things grow a gardener can only make 
the right conditions? Can we create the conditions through which the power of the seed is released to grow? And so the same is true for us and the Holy Spirit. We can't become all these things ourselves. And so what's the, the key or the secret to real Christian growth? How do we have the Holy Spirit work in our lives? Galatians chapter 5 tells us it's to yearn after Jesus. Because the fruit of the Spirit is perfectly displayed in the life of Jesus. And so to have more of the Spirit is to become increasingly more like Jesus. To become more like the one that we love and we cherish the most. And so the Spirit and the flesh are both yearning. And if you want to grow, yearn after the things that the Spirit yearns after. Amen. bring our time together to a close with uh, a blessing. God, the Holy Trinity, 
make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>